Hello, this is Yo Sensei. In today's tutorial, we are going to learn Rhino's cool commands to create lighting product. We will be using twist command, flow along surface, and cage edit. These commands are very unique to Rhino and gives you flexibility to model organic forms. Okay, let's get to it. So when you open up this file, uh, this has uh, three types of light. Uh, this one is a pendant light, and uh, this one is a table lamp, and uh, this one is like a wall sconce. So um, that's what we're going to do. So uh, when you open up this, um, you can just, uh, you know, do it on any layer that you want, but uh, having some kind of layer that you can use would be helpful. So the first one, uh, we have this kind of somewhat a uh, very twisted type of shape, uh, and uh, it's a pretty cool uh, model uh, that we would like to uh, create, make it into, uh, you know, build it, uh, render view. So uh, I think something like that uh, can cast a really beautiful shadow. So uh, let's get to it. So uh, first, uh, I'm just going to hide uh, everything that I don't need and uh, change it to shaded view and uh, work on it. So uh, I guess I'm going to use my right view because the front view is uh, aligned with the uh, model. So I'm going to open up right view and um, I'm going to somewhat create, um, you know, sense of uh, side profile uh, for this uh, object. So starting from somewhere uh, in the middle, um, you can create this kind of like, you know, like a pumpkin type of shape, uh, that would be nice. And uh, in this case, we can just keep drawing to just cre uh, close it. Okay, so we have created this um, closed uh, curve. Okay, so what we're gonna do uh, is we are going to go up to go back to our um, you know, perspective view uh, and then uh, extrude it, extrude curve, uh, or you can just select from the extrude uh, curve here. Um, same thing and uh, solid option yes and uh, you know add uh, maybe you know a half 0.25 inch of thickness or maybe half inch of thickness 0.5 inch of thickness so uh, we have this okay. so now uh, what we're gonna do is uh, we are going to array uh, array polar to uh, duplicate this object. So uh, array polar. And uh, that's going to be close to the midpoint of this bounding box and uh, center with this. And then um, let's do 25 objects around this uh, 360 degrees. So uh, that's going to give us uh, this kind of, you know, beautiful caged uh, type of object. So the next thing that we are going to do uh, is probably you can just lock the bounding box and then move this guy to the center of the bounding box. Okay, and then um, it's probably easier if we hide this. So now I would like to find a center point of this uh, curve, uh, this circle. So I will draw a diagonal line to, you know, points that will intersect, I think. Yeah, that seems about right. Okay, so this is a center point to do that. So I'm just going to do uh, draw a vertical line uh, in the right view, and then uh, take that from the top view, and then just move it to where it should go. Uh, and move command to move it here. Okay, so we have this vertical axis uh, that in the middle of this object. So what we're gonna do is select this uh, cage like object and uh, run twist command. So twist is a really cool tool that you can use. And then in this case, you need to disable uh, the project snap. And then click on the bottom of the axis, top of the axis, and then Quick horizontal and then start spinning. So that's going to give you this kind of beautiful twisted object. Um, so uh, what you can do is you can group this object and then uh, click on copy 
we click forward and paste. So now uh, we have two groups uh, here. And uh, then what we can do is uh, we can just um, mirror this object, mirror. And then starting from the middle point, and then go straight down. And then mirror is going to keep the ob original object that you had. So um, you have to delete it. Or you can go into like this and delete. So now uh, we have double layer, uh, which is pretty cool. So now uh, then you can just use the gumball of the um, you know scale command uh, gumball uh, to kind of make it smaller. So that you will have this kind of like beautiful uh, double layered uh, lighting type of model. Um, that can work as a pendant like okay so that is the first one um let's do the second one okay and uh, uh the second one that we are going to do oh you have to unlock the bounding box and then show select it and um then hi uh show select so the standing box. Okay, so in this case, what we have here is a um, type of egg shape, and then this of these objects are kind of like you know flowing through the surface, and uh, then we have this object that is a simple um, sphere, smash spheres, and then th there is a um, you know surface. So we can uh, apply this in onto this. So. Um, the way to do it is um, first, I am going to draw a um, egg-like profile um, with project on egg-like profile, and uh, it doesn't have to close. So um, okay, so. Um, if it's if this line curve is to continue, it's going to look like an egg. I think. Okay, so this time we are going to revolve this object. And then uh, take it from here and go down and then 360. So we have a revolved shape. So now we need to know how big this thing, this thing is, or at least a proportion of it. So um, we are going to run a um, length curve length dimension so it's this one curve length dimension so this one is actually really useful uh, so that we can just click on this edge and then first curve point and the second curve point and enter so it's 5.95 inch uh, and then next curve is here actually turn off project and then here and uh, this one is 3.87 inches. And uh, we also need to know uh, this one. So, um, or yeah, this edge. So uh, run uh, curve dimension tool and then select this one and then click on it and then, you know, get 4.45. And then I think I need to get the thickest point. So I'm just going to draw a horizontal line and then project this line onto the surface so that I can get uh, the curve dimension of uh, of this object. Okay, so my circumference on the thickest part is 9.88 and uh, the thinnest part is 5.9 and so somewhere in between I can take some middle numbers and uh, we can go with maybe seven for the round and 4.45. So 4.45. So uh, four by seven. Uh, seven inches wide and then four inches tall. Okay. So this is uh, what we have. And uh, since we have a clean uh, four by seven number, uh, so you can just draw a rectangle uh, for, uh, 
of one inch by one inch. And then you can just copy uh, this object and create a grid. Or you could actually use the grid snap. It's either way it works. So uh, select from left to right and uh, create this grid. Now uh, we have this grid. Well, I'm going to move this grid to the actual grid. So grid snap on and type M for move and then click the grid here. Okay. So um, first uh, we need to find the center point of this object. So draw a diagonal line and then uh, go to create a sphere that is going to be about slightly bigger than yourself. Okay. So that's our uh, first sphere. And then you can squish it by pulling this blue handle. So it's pretty thin. And uh, we are going to copy this um, type copy or uh, click on this copy uh, thing. And then you can just keep copying this object. But when you're doing this kind of operation, make sure that where your objects are in the right place in the perspective view, because it could be off. So now we can select it from uh, right to left, and then turn on project, and then uh, copy this onto this process. So next thing that we need to do is we need to convert this base curve into surface. So planar surf uh, command. So in theory, uh, we will tell Rhino to wrap these objects around this of uh, this base, and then using this as a uh, wrapper. Okay, so that's the idea. So um, select these objects from right to left in the front view. Uh, group it if you want. And then uh, we will do it. So the command is called flow along surf. Okay. And then uh, copy yes, rigid no, uh, plain constant normal, auto adjust yes, preserve structure no. So that's the idea. And then Rhino is going to ask base surface, select base surface near the corner. And then select the edge, which is this edge. So it had applied this, but I think there is something wrong with it. So there is, this object is not in the right place. So that failed. So uh, the way you will fix it uh, is pretty simple. You can select the whole thing on the bottom and then uh, just turn 90 degrees. Okay. And then we will run uh, flow along surface command again enter and then always read this so it's um so flow along surface um click here uh select object to flow along surface enter place when done and then base surface uh which is this base surface okay and then target surface so always read this area and that's going to give you you know uh tell you what to do So it has been applied uh, in the correct way. Um, I think I, I should have made uh, the base to be a little bit more, um, you know, uh, to have a little bit more of uh, numbers, but you know, I think for uh, a demo, I think this is okay. So I think what you should try shoot for is, you know, adjusting these numbers to uh, get more even uh, shape form. So uh, this one is actually more successful in terms of, you know, form, these forms are uh, more even. I think these are a little bit more different. All right, so uh, let's get to the next one. So the next one, so selected, and then I will select this one. And um, next one uh, is uh, def creating deformation after the fact using this command called um case edit okay so i will do something that is that, that is slightly uh, different so uh no. it's going to be more fun okay okay so first uh i am going to create a sphere a very tiny sphere uh, around the uh, midpoint of this 
And then uh, I am going to create a diagonal line. And then run array polar command. And then uh, 20 objects. So as long as they are touching, that would be fine. So 20 is good. Or I'm going to try 22. So that there's going to be a little bit more uh, overlap. So now I am going to copy this um, so that it is overlapping slightly. And then now I'm going to take the second one and then project on and then copy it from the uh, obvious, pretty easy to find point from the previous uh, place. So uh, we have these series of uh, spheres uh, in this kind of tower format. Um, we can lock bounding box and then select this and then uh, group. Okay. So uh, the next command is called cage edit. I don't know how to enlarge this. Okay, so um, so when you type KG edit, uh, select captive, captive objects. So these are these blue ones, and then uh, it's going to ask you for select control object, uh, bounding box, and coordinate system C plane, um, and then cage parameters. Uh, you can do uh, X point count four, uh, Y point count four, Z point count four. So let's just go with the default. So, and then region to edit global, uh, mostly default setting is fine. So it's going to give you this kind of cage and the point. So what, uh, this is really cool. So you can select uh, these cages and then uh, hold shift and uh, close the gumball. And uh, so it can create uh, this kind of very cool uh, effect of you know, creating the gradations of scale, which is very cool. And um, so, you know, I guess if we are to like play with this as a low light, uh, I can just rotate the whole thing and then uh, this part uh, could start turning. by the gumball and then go pretty horizontal to the wall and um, maybe this edge oops. this edge this is a very heavy operation for your computer so um, if it doesn't work I don't think you should press it too hard um, but for the purpose of the demo, uh, we are doing somewhat. Uh, so you can really edit this form by, um, you know, these uh, control points. Uh, you can even twist it. And then that's going to give you crazy you know formal uh things so uh you can uh, really play it but i'm just going to go with uh, this kind of you know basic shape uh you can press es escape to um get out of there so yeah this is this would be the cage edit tool uh cage edit is going to let you edit uh multiple objects uh, around the same cage and uh, so that's going to let you create sense of uh, scale change and things like that Okay, so that will conclude the modeling part of the lighting design. Uh, I hope you will enjoy uh, building these models. Uh, take care and uh, I will see you in the next video.